Hi, I'm Brian Ierson. I'm one of the trainers with the Computer Workshop. In today's tutorial, I'm going to go over how to add a calendar to a team site, how you can connect that calendar to your Outlook account, and how you can create an event web part on your site. With all three of these items interconnected, you can now create and see events in multiple different locations. Once the team site is created, a group is automatically created. This will include a group email and as such also a group calendar. To add the calendar to the site, we're going to come to the home page. We're going to go to the new drop down and we're simply going to come down and locate app. When the My Apps page is displayed, I'm going to look for the apps that you can add heading and the little paragraph below it to locate the classic experience link. Now the site contents your apps page will be displayed and we will see a series of tiles with different apps that we can choose to add to our site. And in this case, we will locate calendar in the third row, fourth column. Giving this a tap will, of course, allow us to now add the calendar to our site where we can add in a name and tap create. Once the calendar has been created, it will open and be displayed in the classic experience view. There is no modern experience view available for a calendar within SharePoint. If we look currently at the quick launch panel, you will see that there is a recent option with the group calendar. This does not mean that this will be displayed as we go to other pages within our SharePoint site. As an example, if I click home, the quick launch does not display my calendar. So to add my calendar to this quick launch, I'm going to begin by going to the site contents link and in my site contents page, locating that group calendar. I'm going to simply right click on it or use the three dot ellipse button here for show actions. And I'm going to access the settings. In the settings page, I'm going to locate and highlight the web address for the calendar and copy it. And now we are going to edit our quick launch navigation by tapping the edit links button and then adding a new link by again tapping the new link button here. Text to display. I'm going to put in what I would like this link to say. So I'm going to stay very simple and just put in group calendar. And then in the address, I'm going to paste the link that we have just copied. Tapping OK. I should now see the group calendar added as a link to the quick launch and simply tap save. Coming back to the home tab, we can now see that this link is available in the quick launch and will take us directly to our calendar. Now I would like to connect this to my Outlook account and I will do that by locating the calendar, coming to the calendar tab up in the ribbon and locating inside the connect and export group, the connect to Outlook button. You will be prompted to open with Outlook. You may want to consider to always allow this account to communicate with SharePoint and Outlook and then choose to open Outlook. Outlook opens. You will also notice a new Microsoft Outlook connect this SharePoint calendar to Outlook window. And we would simply tap the yes button to make this connection. If necessary, you want to configure more advanced features, you can tap the advanced button. 
but in this case I am going to simply tap yes to connect this SharePoint calendar to Outlook. I will be prompted to add in my Microsoft service here, so I need to put in my email. And of course, password. You may be prompted to stay signed into all of your apps. And since this is all in the same account, I would say tap OK. When the You're All Set window opens, simply tap Done. Once the calendar is connected, if you are signed into your single account, it would be listed under My Calendars. If it is connecting to another account, it would be listed under Other Calendars as an option within the calendar navigation. With this calendar checked on, I do want to point out that you have the name of the site dash group cal. So it is using the name of the calendar that we created, as well as the name of the site that it is coming from. We can overlay the calendars. We can split the calendars apart. They are going to be color coded. The thing that we have to pay attention to is which calendar we are working in when we create an event. So I will go ahead and create an event here a little later on today. Once I have finished creating the event in Outlook, I'm going to switch back over and look at my calendar in SharePoint. Once back in SharePoint, I may need to refresh my calendar, but I should see the event that I just created in my Outlook calendar view reflected here inside of SharePoint. If I were to add another calendar event in SharePoint, and I will see the event listed here in my calendar within SharePoint, and returning to Outlook, I can see my new event has also been added to this calendar. A question that a lot of people ask is, how do I get this event to show in my own personal calendar? To do that, I'm going to open the event. You will notice on the Appointment tab in the Actions group, you have a Copy to My Calendar button, which when tapped, will now add that event to your personal calendar also. Back in SharePoint, I might want to have a web part on a page which shows me any upcoming events that are on that group calendar. In order for me to add this, I need to select the page where I would like to add the web part. If I had multiple pages, in this case, I'm just going to use Home. And I'm going to look in the upper right where I can locate the edit button, which will allow me to reconfigure the layout of this page. In this case, I'm going to hover above the news and locate a small gray bar with a circle and a plus sign in it. This is the add a new web part button. Giving this a tap, I will now see the list of available web parts that I can add. If I have been using it frequently, I can locate it here. If I am going to scroll through, I am going to look for the News, People, and Events group, and there is the Events button. Or I can simply click into the search and type in what I'm looking for, and then select it from the results. Right away, you will notice that the events that are currently on the calendar have been added to this web part. I'm going to come to the web part edit button, which will be located in the upper left of that web part, or just above it, I should say, and click the pencil icon to open the side events panel. And here I want to go through and potentially look at what options I have. And here I want to go through and look at the options that are available. So to begin, I'm going to look at the source. I can say that this is just this site, a site collection, 
all sites or a specific set of selected sites. So I could actually have this web part connect to other sites to pull those calendar events into a view. In this case, I'm going to leave it to events list on this site. I can then choose the calendar that I need to connect to. I can then choose to limit this to show only things that fit within a specific category. And I may also want to consider that I don't want this to show every upcoming event because this could literally entail years worth of events. So the date range here, I might say, just show me things that are in this week, this month, or I can set a date range. I'm going to simply choose this month. I can then decide whether I like a film strip view or a compact view. And that is going to be really determined by the amount of other information that you would like to include in this or on this page. For now, I'm going to leave it with film strip view. I can choose to narrow the number of items here. So let's say that I'm going to just drop this to five items. I can decide whether I'm going to use audience targeting within this web part also. I can decide whether or not I'm going to show event images and I'm going to turn this off. Once I've made these few adjustments, I can then simply tap republish. My page will be updated to now show me the web part for the events. And notice that there is the ability to add an event right here within the web part. So I can add images here. I can put in a title, set the date and time where I can even put in a link if I wanted this to be a Teams meeting. So if I had created a meeting, I could paste the link in there. I could put in a display name, associate a category to this, fill in information that people who are being invited might need to know and then start adding in participants. In this case, I'm going to leave everything as is with just a modification to the name, date and time, and simply come to the upper right and save. Coming back to home, I can now see the third event has been added. If I were to look at my group calendar, we will see that the third event has been added. If we were to look at Outlook, we will see that the third event has also been added. Here again, you may need to refresh these screens, these applications, in order to get the updated information. And that concludes today's tutorial. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel and follow us to see what's coming up next. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can also find information on upcoming classes and offerings at our website, tcworkshop.com. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. And until next time, take care for now.